So, hi everyone, my name is Millie Plotkin. I am with the Academy for Eating Disorders Social Media Committee. And today I am talking to the co-chairs of the International Conference on Eating Disorders, Anthea Firstland and Gerard Calzo. So thank you both for taking the time to talk to me. So of course, as we know, the conference was supposed to be in Sydney this year. And because of COVID-19, that isn't gonna happen. And you had to make the decision to change this to an online conference. So that's what I'm gonna be talking to you about. Um, so what has that process been like having to make this big switch from in person to online? I think the first hurdle in, in my view was getting over the disappointment. We were so excited about having the conference in Australia, um, for the ANSED membership to have opportunity to meet their international colleagues and vice versa. We wanted to welcome you all to our wonderful country, to Sydney, and to our um, locale and our way of working. Um, but I think we didn't want to lose what we had. That makes a lot of sense. And I'll say as someone who's never been to Australia, I'm very sad that I don't get to go, but hopefully someday. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> Yeah, to add to that, um, I think, you know, disappointment was, you know, the obvious first, um, you know, reaction. And I think especially, you know, and I think it's okay to speak on behalf of the other members of the scientific program committee who put um, so much hard work and effort into um, planning the conference to not be able to see um, the conference come to full fruition the way it was intended was um, an obvious disappointment. Um, uh, but, you know, to move towards a digital conference format um, has been such a big learning curve um, for all of us. And uh, many of the members of the committee had uh, participated in webinars or done various types of web speeches or speaking series, but never anything to this scale. Um, and I think something that's become apparent um, in going through this process is that we're all a part of a Big community of creative thinkers and problem solvers um, who are just so committed to um, this vision and seeing this conference as this unstoppable event and are really committed to delivering um, the same world-class um, science and um, practic practice um, recommendations um, even in this new format. Um, so even though we are disappointed that it can't be delivered as intended, um, we're also excited and we're focusing on this as um, a new opportunity to um, still deliver on that vision. Great. So what, do you, what have you found to be particularly challenging about having to make this transition? I think we've all had to come up across a steep learning curve we have had to be creative and um, we're also having lives which are affected by COVID-19. So many people are having to adjust their clinical work, their research work, their family life. Um, and some people were not able to um, contribute to the conference in the way that they were hoping to. Yeah, that's understandable. There's so much stress when you've got family and, and work and you're suddenly making these huge transitions just in everyday life. We had to, um, when we invited all the presenters to present their work online, uh, we tried to make it really clear to them that we weren't pressurizing them. And some people felt unable to present their work, but the vast majority have agreed and are excited by the prospect. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, um, the response, um, you know, when we decided to move towards the um, virtual conference um, has been inspiring. Um, and at the same time, you know, when we did start to invite people back, um, we were very clear that, you know, we recognize that this was a huge ask because 
Um, everyone's lives have been affected by this unprecedented um, pandemic, but not everyone's lives have been affected in the same way. And so we had to recognize and give people um, that flexibility. And um, you know, throughout this entire process, um, you know, in addition to it being a steep learning curve on the planning side, um, we've just had to be flexible and recognize everyone has to be flexible when it comes to um, executing on this event. Um, and you know, just taking the case example of workshops, for example, um, acknowledging that this type of um, presentation format, which thrives on being interactive, um, is an aspect of the conference that um, really needs to adapt um, for a virtual format. And so again, this is one aspect of um, delivering a conference in a virtual format where um, it has been challenging and we've had to um, you know, create space for um, presenters who um, felt that they could no longer deliver um, the workshop as intended, you know, um, being open to saying it's okay if they can't um, deliver the workshop. And then for those who do, um, also uh, making accommodations and um, trying our best to give them the support to deliver the workshop in the new format. Um, and we need to think and be flexible to see how that can be done, um, dealing with time zone issues and all sorts of other yes. things that come up given our global community. Yes, I'm sure the time zones are certainly a, um, something that comes up a lot because usually during a conference, everyone is in one room. You don't have to think about it unless, except ahead of time when you're making your travel plans. But when we have an audience who literally is worldwide, tuning into the conference. I'm sure that's required a lot of extra planning. It certainly has, and we're getting very good at time zones. <laughs> well, uh, well, even for figuring out how to do this interview, we had to work that out. That's right. Um, what's exciting is that we are having a lot of our presentations live. Uh, we have over 25 workshops live. We have the keynote and all four plenaries will be live. And of course, live means not live. M many people in the world will be asleep during that time, but <laughs> right. um, it means that we are trying to uh, cover as many time zones as possible um, with our live events. So that actually goes really well into the next question, which is what are you really excited about? You mentioned the keynotes and the plenaries. Uh, yes, I'm really excited uh, to have Janet Treasure as our keynote speaker. I think her reflection over her 40-year career and her constant energy and foresight and planning towards the future is going to be really interesting and appropriate at this time when we are all reflecting on our work and life. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of things I'm excited about, um, you know, there are some things that I'm excited about uh, with regards to um, what this new virtual conference could offer. Um, you know, we talk about some of the logistical challenges of people being all over the place. Um, but at the same time, um, because a lot of the material will be recorded, um, that also means that um, any of the attendees can access the material at their own pace. And so we will have um, uh, 25 workshops. We will have um, all the plenaries that were part of the original program and we will have the same keynote. Um, one of the differences about offering the conference online versus um, in person is that it's a lot easier to attend to all of the material because you can pace yourself. Um, and the material will be available not just from the 11th to the 30th, but as a registrant, you'll have access to it indefinitely once you um, access the material online. Um, and that also includes all the paper sessions and the posters. Um, and not having to travel all the way to Australia, although again, that was a major selling point for many of us. Um, it's also a greener alternative for folks. And so um, uh, 
there are a lot of positives um, that come out of this conference as well and um, in terms of accessibility um, and the ability to see much more content and participate in a lot and much more content um, that um, would not be so readily available in the face-to-face -face conference. So we're excited about, I'm excited about those aspects personally. I think another positive aspect is that more people will be able to attend. Mm. People who couldn't afford time off or afford the flights or the accommodation, the whole expense of attending a conference will now be able to um, register at a much more reduced rate and be able to access that information in their own time, whether it's an hour a day, um, splurging on several hours at a time, people can choose. Yeah, and I think in a time like this, when sometimes our attention spans are not what they usually are in normal circumstances, that is definitely a major advantage. For sure. Um, Anthea mentioned the keynote. Jarrell, do you want to say a word about the plenary sessions? Just to remind people about the topics. Oh yeah, for sure. So again, I, I have to say that, you know, I am so, um, again, inspired, especially in, the, in these times when there's so much stress in people's lives that, you know, even with, um, again, everything that everyone has to juggle that we were still able to get, um, you know, the same speakers um, to commit to delivering these plenaries. And so we have um, the sociocultural plenary, which will focus on um, the latest research on males and eating disorders. Um, the um, biology plenary, which will focus on transdiagnostic research. Um, the treatment plenary, which will um, focus on interesting um, debate and tensions in the field with regards to evidence-based treatments. Um, and of course, the first plenary um, in the history of ANZID and AED, I believe, which is specifically focused on food. Um, so again, very interesting talks, world-class talks, really, um, that you don't just have to listen to once, but you'll have access to um, uh, indefinitely. So. Great. Um, before we wrap up, is there anything else that either of you would like to say, add to the discussion? Um, we will be releasing most of the material at the beginning of the original conference, but we, we will be having workshops live over the following two weeks. So there will be opportunities to watch the workshops live over the rest of June. They will be released every few days. Okay, so great. there will be um, ongoing new material. Good. I'm really looking forward to hearing how that, or seeing how that works. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun for everyone. Mm -hmm. And we're um, continuing to work on ways to um, uh, build in the um, very important um, and essential networking opportunities um, that are so important um, to maintaining our global um, uh, community. Good. As you said, that is very, networking is such a big part of any conference is not just listening to talks. So I'm glad that you're, you're looking and hopefully finding some good solutions for that. As I mentioned when we were talking um, before we started this, I think with all conferences that for all organizations this year, everyone is having to switch to online. And there's probably gonna be a lot of new innovations coming out as people realize that this might really be the way of the future. Not that all conferences will only be online, but um, this might be a big component of conferences going forward. Mm -hmm. So, Thank you both for taking the time to talk to me today. I've really enjoyed this. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the conference in June. So, so we thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.